What we're going to do today uh, uh, would be uh, would be quite straightforward, but some uh, some of the problems uh, are a little bit tedious. Some of them are not so tedious. Um, so first of all, the first, if you look at my handout, you'll see that uh, there are three types of integrals that we we are going to look at. The first uh, is the uh, there are so in the first category of integrals. Uh, we have these three types of integrals. Uh, we have the integral where the integrand is sine mx times cosine nx. The second integral is, uh, I I the second integrand is sine mx uh, sine nx. The third one is cosine mx cosine nx. Now, to be, uh, uh, to be correct, I should be writing a uh, parenthesis around around the angles, right? So mx is the angle for sine, nx is the angle for uh, cosine, but I would be sloppy. Uh, I wouldn't write those usually. Now, yeah. Where? Uh, oh yes. Uh, thank you. Um, So you're talking about this one, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's gotta be sine. Uh, I think I have sine in my notes, right? Okay, the second integrand is sine mx sine nx. Uh, okay, so how would I uh, how would I evaluate these three types of integrals? Well, uh, the trick is basically apply uh, certain uh, trig identities. So for the first integral, you have to apply the uh, identity uh, sine A cosine B is equal to half of uh, sine A minus B plus sine A plus B. For the second integral, you have to apply the identity uh, sine A sine B is half cosine A minus B minus cosine A plus B. For the third integral, you have to apply uh, the identity cosine A cosine B is half cosine A minus B plus uh, cosine A plus B. Um, so, uh, so again, uh, the way we are going to handle these integrals is by applying those identities. Okay. All right. So uh, let's let's do a few examples of of this types of integrals. So. Um, my first example would be, let's say, I have the integral uh, 1 over 4 uh, times, uh, well, let's not use uh, fractions, I don't want to make, let's use a 3 here, and let's say I have a uh, sine of uh, 3x and cosine of uh, 5x dx. Let's say that's the integral that I have to evaluate. How would I do it? Well, um, I am going to apply the corresponding identity that I need. So this would be equal to, uh, let me uh, write it as 3. And then what is uh, what is the identity for this product? Well, uh, you have to think of uh, you have to think of three x as the angle A, and you have to think of five x as the angle B in the formula. Okay. So what is sine A cosine B? It is uh, it is half times uh, sine A minus B, which is what. 3x minus 5x plus uh, sine of a plus b, which would be 3x plus 5x dx. So this is equal to the integral of 3 half. Okay, so what do I have here? I have sine of negative 2x uh, plus sine of 
of 8x. Is everybody okay? And all right, so this is equal to the uh, integral of 3 half. Uh, can someone tell me what is uh, sine of negative 2x? I can say that sine of negative 2x is the same as negative sine 2x. Sine is an odd function. And I, I, I can write this as sine 8x. Is everybody okay? You guys are, so sine of negative theta is the same as negative sine theta. If you think about the unit circle, look at the angle theta and negative theta, right? The second coordinates for those angles are negative of each other, okay? And once I have this, then I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of uh, uh, 3 half, negative 3 half sine 2x dx plus the integral of 3 half sine 8x dx. Um, let me write one more line here. Let me factor out those uh, constants. So I get sine 2x dx plus 3 half integral of sine 8x dx. Now can someone tell me what's the antiderivative of sine 2x? Let me do some scratch work in red. Uh, that is what, what we need to find is what's the integral of sine of some constant, let's say c, multiplied with x. Uh, that's what I need to find integral of sine of cx, where c is the constant. <coughs> what is that integral? Well, we could do a substitution, right? u is cx, and then what would be du? du would be c dx. In other words, I could say 1 over c du is uh, dx. And um, and so then this integral here is equal to the integral of sine u, uh, sine of u times 1 over c uh, du, right? And then I have 1 over c outside and the integral of sine of u du. You agree with that? And what is that equal to? 1 over c negative cosine of u negative cosine of u right um, and I should be saying plus some constant right because I already used c uh, let's, let's use something else like uh, uh, I don't know beta okay so this is equal to uh, negative 1 over c times cosine of u, right? Plus the beta. Let's just ignore the beta for now. Just the main part of the integral is what? Negative 1 over c times cosine of u, right? I wish I didn't use c. I used something else. Uh, but my, my point is then, what did we get? The integral of sine, let me change c with something else, okay? Let's use A. What is sine integral of sine AX DX? What we found out, so C is A. Negative 1 over A. Negative 1 over A. Cosine. Cosine of what? AX, right? Remember, I, once I found cosine of U, I have to replace U by CX again, right? U was CX. You agree with that? U was CX? I didn't write that step there, but at the end I should be getting, I replaced C by A, I get this, right? You agree with that? 
So what's the net effect here? Net effect is, you know, integral of sine x got to be cosine ax, but you have to multiply by negative 1 over a. Okay? And similar way, I can look at what's the integral of cosine bx for some constant b. In this case, I don't need a negative. All I need is 1 over b sine bx plus c. Okay? If you can remember these two integrals, it makes it easier. Otherwise, you have to apply the substitution and so on. So let's go back to my uh, uh, problem here. The problem was this, right? And notice that I have integral of sine 2x and integral of uh, sine 8x. Uh, so for, for both integrals, I have to apply a substitution, right? For the first one, I take u to be 2x. For the second one, I take u to be 8x. You could do that, apply the substitutions for both of them and carry out the calculations. But I'm just going to apply now what I found out here, okay? So uh, my original problem then goes, goes along like this. I had a, I think, uh, was that a negative 3 half I had? And then the integral of sine 2x would be what? Integral of sine 2x would be negative half cosine 2x. And then the second integral was uh, 3 half sine 8x, which would be 1 over 8 cosine 8x. And then I'm going to say plus c. Is that, is that making sense? Did you guys follow that? Uh, please, if you have any questions on this, go ahead and ask. If you understood this problem, you understood all the other exercises on that uh, which one? Uh, are we here? Oh, I, I didn't see what's up there, sorry. Let me go up. So I had a negative 3 halves integral of sine 2x plus that, right? So I have... I'm sorry? Oh yes, this is this is where I should be getting a negative one, I guess. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, so that's the and one more step would be to multiply out those constant numbers, okay? So I'll let you let you do that. Any questions on any of the steps? Any questions at all? All right, so let's look at another one then. And this time I won't uh, uh, show you every single step. So let's say I have now the int integral of sine 3x times sine um, 5x dx. Um, and so how would I find that integral? Well, uh, we could do the following. We, c uh, we are going to replace, so this is what? Right now I have sine A and sine B, right? What is A? A is 3x, B is 5x. So applying my, my identity, I get what? Half of sine or cosine? Cosine. Cosine of what? A minus B, which would be 3x minus 5x minus cosine of A plus B, 3x plus 5x. Okay, and so what do I get? I get half uh, cosine of negative 2x minus cosine of 8x let me put a half here dx um, so uh, can I write this as half uh, let me write maybe one, one more line half what is cosine of negative 2x 
that's the same as cosine of 2x, right? Cosine is even. So minus half uh, cosine of 8x uh, dx. Is that okay? Cosine of negative theta is just cosine theta, yes? Uh, well, it's going to make my answer look uh, prettier. Otherwise, in my answer, what, what I'm going to get is uh, sine of negative x. I'm going to get something like negative sine of negative x. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, that's, that would be the difference. But you can, if you don't change that at the end, you can write sine of negative x is negative sine x. That would be fine too, yes. So this is equal to, so you, uh, uh, this is equal to uh, uh, half times the integral of cosine 2x dx minus half integral of cosine of 8x dx. And now I'm just going to quote my work in uh, red ink. I had half integral of cosine 2x would be half sine 2x uh, minus half integral of cosine 8x would be 1 8 sine 8x and then plus the c plus the c at the end. Okay, remember in red the work I will be doing in red uh, if you don't want to memorize that or don't want to remember that, what would you do when you came to the uh, to the second la last st step? You are going to apply u substitution by taking u to be 2x and u to be 8x, right? For the two integrals, uh, and then carry out the calculations. Yeah. 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 I just have a question. Uh, there. So you have one half. Cosine negative 2x, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you said this and sort of paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, where does the negative go once you cross that? Yeah, so uh, you, what you have to remember is that, let me write it in red uh, cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine theta. Okay, let me, let me draw a uh, unit circle, let's say, and uh, my scale is going to be pretty bad, but let's work with that. Uh, so um, suppose that this is a theta, and this is a negative theta, right? So then, if you these two points are symmetric to each other, right? Uh, they are reflections of each other ac across x-axis. Now, uh, what is the uh, cosine of uh, negative theta? Cosine of negative theta is the uh, first coordinate of this point, right? The first coordinate, which is, which, is this, which is the length given by the green length is cosine, right? Oops. So the green line length segment is cosine, and which is the same for both angles, right? Am I making sense? So that's why cosine of negative theta and cosine theta are the same. Right? Cosine theta is the first coordinate of the, uh, of the uh, point on the unit circle corresponding to the angle. Right? All right, so, so again, I, I was talking about the green line segment. That's the value of cosine theta and cosine negative theta. Uh, they are the same. All right, so, um, all right, so you get that. Uh, any, any other questions? Okay, if you, uh, um, you know, if, if uh, you know, in calcul calculus one, we used uh, trigonometry, but not a whole lot. But in this course, we are going to uh, maximize our use of uh, trigonometry, okay? Uh, and, and so you have to be on top of, uh, uh, you have to know all the different identities that, that, that we're going to use in, from trigonometry. And um, so uh, my, uh, I, would, I would say that if you still feel uncomfortable with trigonometry, go back to the, uh, the review that, that I did in trigonometry in Calc 1 uh, and, and uh, see if you can uh, remember those, okay? 
if you feel uncomfortable with trigonometry, I think you're going to have a great deal of, of trouble uh, in this course. All right. So, and uh, all right. So, I'm not going to do any more examples on this type of integrals. Let me move on to the uh, uh, the second category of integrals that we want to look at. Uh, so, uh, so my next uh, uh, the next type of integrals that I want to look at would be uh, the following. I want to look at the integral of the form sine to the m x times cosine to the n x. So these are, so I, I am not saying cosine at the angle m x, I'm saying cosine to the power m, the angle is just x here, right? The angles are both x, the powers are different, okay? So now I want to know how I can uh, evaluate integrals where the integrand is a product of powers of sine and cosine. Okay? And the strategy that you need to follow to evaluate an integral like this depends on the parity of the powers. So what do I mean by that? Oh, it is x. It is, it is going to be... It should be x. It should be x. All right, so uh, how would I do it? Well, it dep the strategy depends on the parity. So what do I mean by that? My first case would be, the first case is uh, when n is odd, which means that the, the exponent on cosine is odd. In that case, what should, should you do? So I'm going to explain that by using an example. Let's say I have uh, the integral of sine to the 4x times cosine uh, to the uh, cosine to the um, 5x. So what do I have? Uh, the exponent on cosine is odd, n is odd. So my strategy would be the following. The strategy is uh, don't disturb uh, sine, but break up cosine. That is, you're going to save a factor of cosine. Save a factor of cosine and write it together with dx. And then what, what's the remaining power of cosine? The remaining power of cosine is cosine to the 4, right? So the strategy is save a factor of cosine, and then the remaining power of cosine must be transformed into sine, okay? So my next step is uh, sine to the 4x. How, do, how would I do that? Well, note that cosine to the 4 is the same as cosine squared x to the 2 multiplied by cosine x dx. And what, if I want to convert cosine to sine, what identity can I, can I use? Very good. So this would be 1 minus sine squared x to the 2 cosine x dx. Alright? Again, save a factor of cosine. If the exponent on cosine is odd, save a factor of cosine. The remaining power of cosine would be even. So you can write that as cosine to the 2 to the something and then convert that to sine. And then you're going to make a substitution. The substitution will be take u to be sine and then du would be what? du would be cosine x dx. That's exactly why we saved a factor of cosine. If I take u to be sine, du would be cosine dx. And once I have this, 
I can rewrite the entire integral as u to the 4 1 minus u squared squared and then du what is so nice about it is that I had a I had an integrand involving trig functions and all of a sudden I have an integrand which is just a polynomial I transform the trig function into a polynomial function right and um, and and everybody knows how to handle a polynomial function inside an integral what is that well unfortunately I have to do some arithmetic here right I have to uh, I have to rewrite the 1 minus u squared squared you have to foil it okay you have to multi multiply that out so what am I gonna get I am going to get 1 minus 2 u squared plus u to the 4 right if you if you expand that square and then I will multiply out u to the 4 minus 2 u to the what 6 plus u to the 8 usually mistakes happen in, in, at this step because sometimes instead of adding the exponents people might multiply the exponents okay and so this would be what u to the 4 what's the integral of u to the 4 1 fifth u to the 5 minus 2 over 7 u to the 7 plus 1 over 9 u to the 9 plus uh, c am I done one more step because it's indefinite integral right I have to uh, replace u by what I took it to be u was sine right so this would be sine to the 5x minus 2 seventh sine to the uh, 7x plus 1 ninth sine to the 9x plus a c. Uh, is everybody okay with that? Did that make sense? Okay, let me go back again. So once again, I had an integrand where, where the integrand is a product of powers of sine and cosine. It happens that in our example, the, the exponent on, on cosine is odd. Then my strategy is, save a factor of cosine, the remaining even power of cosine, can be written as cosine squared to the power something and then cosine squared can be converted into sine and then uh, I am going to substitute u equals to sine x and then carry out the calculation after that uh, question what if I switch the exponents on sine and cosine that is if, if instead of having this what if the exponent on sine is odd what what can I do you do the same thing except I do the I switch the roles of sine and cosine right in that case when the exponent on sine is odd you save a factor of sine you save a factor of sine and then you uh, uh, you write the remaining power of sine uh, in terms of cosine and then substitute u equals to cosine did that make sense is everybody okay with that so I won't do that case so there are two cases we have looked at already when the exponent on sine is odd when the exponent on cosine is odd what other cases left if both of them are odd I'm done also because if both of them are odd I can follow either strategy yeah that's the only case that is left okay so now we, we are going to get into what if both of them are even is everybody clear my case all my cases are done except for when both of them are even okay so now let's look at the case 
when when m is even and n is even as well. Uh, this case is easy to understand, you know what to do, but you just don't want to do it. Okay? Uh, you'll see why in a second. Alright, so let's, I'm going to explain this, what to do here by going over some examples. Okay, so let's say I have the integral of sine squared x times cosine squared x dx. Uh, when you have both powers are even, then you need to reduce the powers. And you can reduce the powers by using your favorite uh, trig identity uh, uh, right here. Sine squared of x. Sine squared of x is what? Half 1 minus cosine 2x. Cosine squared x is half 1 plus cosine 2x. So you had an exponent 2. On the right hand side, you don't have exponent 2 anymore. You have that 2 became a factor for the angle, right? Am I making sense? So notice that there is, I don't have any exponent on cosine on the right hand side. So sine squared x is half 1 minus cosine 2x. Cosine squared x is half 1 plus cosine 2x. We are going to apply those two and reduce the exponent uh, um, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, factors. So let's go back to the uh, problem then. Um, Okay, so this is the integral that I had, so this would be equal to um, Okay, so this is equal to uh, integral half uh, sine squared x would be 1 minus cosine 2x and cosine squared x would be 1 plus cosine 2x uh, dx and one half and one half is what? one fourth and then one minus cosine 2x multiplied by one minus cos uh, one plus cosine 2x what is that? if you multiply these two factors right if you foil them what, what do you get? 1 minus cosine squared of 2x. You agree with that? 1 minus cosine squared of 2x. If you multiply them out, 1 minus cosine 2x, 1 plus cosine 2x, multiply them out, foil them, you will you, you, you get that. Now, uh, you might say, well, you tried to reduce the uh, uh, even power, now you got another one. Well, a good thing is I have only one. I had two before, now I have only one. So let's apply, uh, uh, let's apply the identity again. What is cosine squared of 2x? If I reapply my identity. So this would be 1 minus, what is cosine squared of 2x? Uh, actually, if you don't mind, let me do one intermediate step here. I'm going to multiply by one fourth, so I'll be getting this. Whoops. Uh, okay, so you agree that uh, this is what I get, right? And then uh, I will write this as one fourth minus one fourth. Okay, cosine squared of two x. If I reapply the identity, what do I get? Half times one plus cosine of four x. Okay. Remember the identity was 
cosine squared theta is half 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So if theta is 2x, the angle would be 4x. You guys realize that? Uh, in my handout, I have that uh, identity. So if you, uh, if you look at uh, the second page, you'll see that uh, I gave you those uh, formulas that you need. Now, uh, so this is equal to what? Uh, one four. Okay, so this would be one fourth minus one eighth minus uh, what? One eighth cosine four x. Right? What is one fourth minus one eighth? Huh? Three eighth minus one eighth cosine of four x. Say it again. One fourth minus one eighth would be one eighth. Sorry, yes. Um, yeah, it would be one eighth. Sorry. This would be one eighth. And uh, what's the integral of one eighth? So uh, what I have is one eighth x minus one eighth. What's the integral of cosine four x? What's the integral of cosine 4x? 1 fourth sine. 1 fourth sine 4x. Remember we did that, my, the work that I did in red ink was the work that I'm applying here. So uh, at the end, uh, you are getting 1 8 x minus 1 over 32 sine 4x. Is everybody okay? Now, uh, why did I say that it's easy but it's just tedious and uh, you just don't want to do it? Uh, sine squared x times cosine squared of x. Uh, you can imagine what's going to happen if I, uh, instead of this, if I have sine to the 4x, cosine to the 8x or something else, right? Uh, so then, then, then you, ha you have a longer uh, uh, computation that you have to do. If you have the exponents are too big, I will separately write the integrand, work on it to reduce the powers, and then go back to the integral. Okay. Um, so uh, let me do one more example like this. Did Did you guys finish writing it down? Okay. Let me do one more example uh, like that. I have sine to the 4x. Uh, actually, let's write cos um, cosine to the 4x dx. Because the sine to the 4x dx is your homework. Uh, all right, so again, what would you do in this case? Well, the same trick. Uh, cosine squared x uh, squared, that's what I have. And now uh, you are going to write cosine squared not as 1 minus sine squared, you're going to write it as half 1 plus cosine 2x, the entire quantity squared. So I, I wrote cosine squared as half 1 plus cosine 2x and then you see that you get 1 fourth 1 plus cosine 2x squared and um, then you have to write 1 fourth what is 1 plus cosine 2x squared that would be 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine squared 2x. 
so I'm just I just expanded the square and uh, then I will uh, multiply out by the fourth so I get one fourth plus a half cosine 2x plus one fourth uh, cosine squared 2x unfortunately I have another uh, cosine squared so I have to reapply my uh, identity to reduce the power so this would be one fourth times half one plus cosine of this time would be four x because my, I already had two x it will be twice the angle and so I still have dx here so I have one fourth um, okay let me just uh, for, for to save some time here let me um, say that I, I, I get a one-eighth from here right I get a one-eighth from the third term so one-eighth plus one-fourth is what? three-eighth plus half cosine two x uh, plus one-eighth cosine four x so I get this once I multiply out by five and then by half and then uh, simplify a little bit and now it's easy to see uh, the integral of 3 8 is 3 8 x integral of uh, half cosine 2 x would be half times One integral half. of cosine 2 x would be yeah, half yeah. sine 2 x plus uh, 1 8 times uh, one fourth uh, cosine. Oops. Uh, sine four x plus c. All right. I was tr I was forcing myself to finish five minutes on this. Okay. So uh, we are done with the first two pages in my handout. Uh, we will do the rest. We'll do the rest uh, on Monday. Uh, right here. Yeah. Okay.